Hello everybody and welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be doing So You Want to Play Hindustani. Uh, it's actually the old Indian Civ, but I'm going to go ahead and redo it because it got significant changes to the point where uh, it's a completely different Civ now and it plays out, although somewhat similarly, pretty different as well. So I'm going to hop into this one guys. I'm doing this off stream. I'm going to go ahead and queue up for a game and while we're in queue, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the tech tree and see what the Civ has to offer. If you guys are new to the series, I basically take one sieve and dissect it from a theoretical point of view and also a practical point of view. Theoretical by taking a look at the tech tree and the options it has available and practical by playing a game at the top of the ladder. We're currently like yeah, rank 10 top of the ladder and we're going to be matched against someone who's also around that level. So let's hop into the tech tree here just to talk a little bit more about like the theory and, and what units to go for, what are the sieve strengths, etc, etc. Let's hop in guys. Hindustani is described as a camel and gunpowder civilization. Uh, their bonuses are as follows, villagers costing minus 10% um, uh, food in dark age, minus 15 in feudal, minus 20 in castle, and minus 25 in imperial age. Uh, huge, huge discount there, especially as the game goes on. Really strong eco bonus there. Uh, camel riders attack 25% faster. This is one of their new bonuses, and it's one of the bonuses that I think is extremely strong in 1v1 when you're going for camels. Not only uh, against like knights or like just a fight, but also against buildings because you also do have that bonus damage against buildings that we'll get to here. Uh, next up, we got gunpowder units with plus one armor, uh, pierce and melee. Pretty good for late game. And then you can build caravanserai, which is just a, it's a building that helps with trade. It's only, you know, good for team games. And um, yeah, I'm not going to really cover that too much in this video. Uh, their unique units are actually very strong. The Ghulam, which is an infantry unit. Think of it like an Eagle Warrior um, that actually beats Eagle Warriors. It's quite insane. Uh, and then the Imperial Camel Rider, uh, which is just like the Paladin for the Camel Rider. Uh, it's an upgrade after the Heavy Camel. Uh, for unique tech, they have Grand Trunk Road, which gives all gold income, uh, you know, comes in 10% comes in faster. This includes Relic, Gold Mining, and Trade. Um, Shatagni, Shatagni hand cannoneers plus two range in Imperial Age, huge. You can get nine range hand cannons with extra armor. Sounds like a good, you know, sounds like a good time to me. Uh, next, you have camel and light cavalry units plus two attack versus buildings. Quite solid stuff there as well, guys. Let's take a look at the tech tree now. Um, crossbowman, elite skirmisher, hand cannoneer, of course. Heavy cav archers with all upgrades except parthen tactics. No elephant archers, though. They do have thumb ring. Uh, onto their barracks, they have a pretty decent barracks with champion and halberdier. Uh, but they do miss some blacksmith upgrades for their infantry. Uh, full upgrades in the barracks, though, which is quite cool. So infantry is a solid option. Uh, going on now to their stable. Their stable is pretty solid, actually. Fully upgraded Hussars, fully upgraded Imperial Camel, but you are missing the Night Line entirely, as well as the Elephant and Step Lancer line. Moving on to their Siege here, they've got the Siege Elephant, which is a very, very strong unit. Uh, think of it like a Siege Ram, but it's a little bit stronger in some ways and a little bit weaker to the Halbs. Uh, next up, we've got the Onagers, which is not you know bad. No Heavy Scorpion, but you do have the Bombard Cannon as an option. So pretty decent Siege Workshop overall, uh, with the Armored Elephant or Siege Elephants being their best tool. The blacksmith is full except for the last melee armor for the infantry, but this, you know, don't worry, this doesn't really affect their unique unit because the unique unit is so strong that it doesn't even need this to be, you know, tanky. Uh, this does affect their halberdiers and their champions, so be careful going infantry against uh, anyone going our blessed terms, pretty much. Uh, for their navy, it's pretty mediocre, I would say. You have galleon and you have cannon, can, elite cannon galleon, but you don't have fast fire or, fa or heavy demo. And you're missing shipwright and dry dock, so your 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 water is good until castle age. After that, it really falls off. Uh, next up, we do have siege engineers, so their bombard cannons and onagers are actually pretty decent. No bomber tower, but yeah, not too bad in the uh, university. Uh, next up, we got the ghoulam guys. 30 food, 45 gold on this guy. It is an eagle warrior that completely dominates archers. It has passed through damage, so like if it hits, if there's three units in a direct line and it hits the front unit its spear will pass through and do a little bit of damage to the units behind it, kind of like a scorpion. So the Ghulam is absolutely insane when it's like 30 versus 30, like those big fights. In little fights, like 8 versus 8 units, it's not going to do as well. It's still okay. Um, but yeah, in, in big fights, it really is just that strong. Um, and um, yeah, the big thing about this unit as well is that it costs very little and it moves very fast. So this unit, in my opinion, might actually get nerfed. It is very strong. And in especially in the... Um, in the matchup against Mesosivs, so Aztec Inca, less so Inca, but Aztec Mines, you just go Ghulam and you kill every unit they have. Like Mines has Plume Darcher, Aztec has like champions. Everything else, like this kills Eagles and this kills our blessed line easily. So yeah, it's a really good tool. Even against Plumes, this is gonna do okay, but yeah, just insane. 
Uh, going on to the monks now, you have Redemption, Block Printing, and Sanctity. Those are the most important ones. So definitely a solid monastery as well. Don't don't sleep on that. And then for Eco Upgrades, it's pretty whatever. You have some options, no call partition, no one cares. And Caravanserai, I'll hover over it. There it is if you guys are interested. See the stats. And yeah, that's fantastic. So let's go ahead and recap what we've seen in the tech tree because it's not you know just about seeing the tech tree. It's also about understanding what to do with the sieve, where it's strong and where its power spikes are. So... Uh, the way I think of Hindustani is that they're a very uh, well-rounded sip and they're strong throughout the entire game. They don't have one power spike that's like much stronger than, than the rest, but they have certain options at every stage of the game that are going to propel them over other civilizations. So in the Dark Age, you can go for really fast uptimes because you have cheaper villagers. In the Feudal Age, you have the choice between scouts or archers because their archery range and their stable is very good as the game goes on. So you have complete flexibility there. You can even open mana arms if you want to. There's really nothing wrong with that. So in feudal age, feel free to open as you know, as you know, whatever you want. It's uh, it's up to you. In the castle age, you really have three options. Either you go range units, stable units, like camels is your only option. So camels, light cav, or you go for the unique unit. Those are like the three options depending on the situation. My advice, generally speaking, is to probably play range units in castle age. Um, yeah, unless you need like just full camos against knights, like that's the idea. Because if you open stable units and you don't have the knight, it's hard to really push with just camos. So keep that in mind. So I, I would really, I personally like to play range units in castle age, and then let that you know you carry on to imperial age, where you can either switch to heavy cav archers or you can go for hand cannoneer with the art ranges you already have, and then you can also switch to hussar, which is like a really good composition for one v one Arabia. And then if you need the unique unit, like I said, you probably want to get to the early castle age in some matchups. So uh, that's the kind of idea that I see uh, Hindustani kind of thrive on. Um, I really don't think it's a civilization that needs to be very one-dimensional. It doesn't have one strength that's better than the rest. It really just has a lot of options and it has a good economy to back it all up. So we've got a game now on 1v1 Arabia. I'm going to hop into it and just ready up and just get right into this one and see what I can do with the Hindustani. I'm going to just fix my chair to make sure I'm comfortable, of course. I will probably not be able to do that, but <laughs> we'll see what I can do. There it is. And it looks like we're up against Lithuanians. Another top tier sieve here, or at least mid, you know, upper mid tier sieve, I, I would say, uh, for Arabia. But guys, Hindustani is like literally S tier. Gonna change the blue here, uh, and, and they're an insane civilization here. So I should be, uh, I should be favored in this matchup. But of course, it's all about the execution as well. So starting off pretty standard here. Just gonna go ahead and get our houses down. Nothing too crazy in early game. Like I said. This civilization doesn't need to do anything fancy. It really just has to do like good decision making. Uh, you have to be solid throughout the game, and you have to get to the units that you know will counter the, what the opponent is doing. And you have literally all the options. So let's think about the matchup. Lithuanians probably wants to get the relics in Castleage, so I can't just boom in Castleage. I have to contest the relics, or else I'm going to be pretty far behind. Uh, versus Lithuanians, who gets the relics and the extra attack with them. So something like Cav Archers comes to mind. Uh, if I can't do Cav Archers, just Camels, maybe Camel and Crossbow can be really good against Lithuanians here. So what I'm thinking is like, I probably want some Crossbow because if I just go Camels, I can open up their possibility for them to go Pike Siege and Lithuanian Pikes are very good. Um, and I also die kind of a little bit to Monks as well. So I kind of want to go Crossbow in, in Feudal Age and then get into uh, Camels later. Or I can go for Cav Archers pure. <laughs> so those are like my few options here. I'm just thinking about what I prefer to do in this particular case. So I really have two options now that I've narrowed it down, guys. I've just thought about the matchup. Um, and you guys can kind of hear my thought process and see just what I'm thinking about really in this early game. I have two options. I can either open Scouts into Cav Archers. Or I can open, you know, just like Drush into Range or just like Range. And then play archers into camels. Those are my two options. One I end with crossbow camel, and the other one I end with pure cav archer in castleage. I'm not sure which one to go for. Both are pretty fine options. I'm gonna go for um, I'm gonna go for archers. I want to play archer camel. Yeah, I've decided <laughs> archer camel. That's gonna be my my game plan here. Could also go scouts into camels. But like I said, that that kind of does that to pikes, but. Um, it's like, will he really go pikes? He might. He might. I don't know. I'm not trying to lose to like, uh, you know, I'm not trying to lose to like some weird options here. Uh, I feel like I don't need to do anything crazy. I just need to play pretty, pretty solid, pretty standard. So yeah, just like crossbow camel makes sense to me. I'm gonna commit to that one. We'll probably open men at arms here just to get some, some, uh, yeah, a, a nice start basically. 
that fourth one on wood. The new mana arm builder, guys. Uh, it's like you go three on wood and you add the fourth one later. He's oh he's oh hold on I might adapt my strategy. He's rushing me. That's interesting. So now <clears throat> I did all the theory crafting and I might just throw it all away. Cause now I see him rushing me. Um, and I don't really know how to respond to that right away here. Got to think it through. Let me see a little bit more what his map has to offer. Cause I need to know if this is rush of sea or rush into feudal age here. And we will of course wall in our barriers to not die to the rush. We will have a mill with the Primo Drush. There it is. Um, probably put one more in Barry's. Just gonna wall in two villagers there. He's just now getting his mill down. And I think his Drush will be around, uh, you know, around finished now. And he's probably moving across the map. So I'm gonna run back to my Barry's. Listen, guys, simple wall for this guy. And then for these guys, I'm just gonna make a house. And then a house there. And I'm totally secure. So, yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. And there I found the Drush. He's trying to block me a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to dodge that. So just judging by his map, it feels like I can pressure his gold. But I should not go scouts because, um, yeah, scouts would be bad here. Because he, he, I think he's got a pretty easy wall. So, yeah, I'm just going to go for probably 20 pop archers here myself. I do have the option here to commit to mana arms if I wanted to. But I'm just thinking it might not be the best idea. Let's see, let's see. It's not a bad idea either. We have to wall in our woodline here, guys, against the Drush. It's kind of like the OP, the overpowered thing to do against the Drush, by the way. Just like wall in your stuff, and it, it, it's so useless, it does nothing. <laughs> but of course, if you don't wall in your stuff, it's gonna be very annoying to deal with, so. Thought I can get a hit there, but not really. Cool. All right, so now we probably need another lumber camp. Probably go there. The back one looks better though. <laughs> it's so bad to do this, but whatever. Alright, cool. Go to that back wood line. And we're just gonna go for the archer. So my plan will remain the same. But now I have to think of some different options. Like now he can go for skirmishers. So if I'm going archers and he goes skirms, I have to switch to a stable. But that's perfect, because I want to play possible camel. I've already decided this. So I don't mind making that stable earlier. Just to kind of be fine there. And guys, new build of archers as well. It's been heavily optimized. You don't need to get the gold early. It's it's you get the gold like as soon as you get the feudal age, you can start moving to gold. The important resource is wood early on because you don't really care if you make one archer or like you know three right away. You just need to make sure you're getting that range as fast as possible on 20 pop up. Uh, and this is of course a little bit more like um, high level stuff. At lower level, it doesn't matter how fast you do it necessarily. He's on gold now, so it looks like he might want to go archers. Because, of course, he might be scared of scouts. Like, I can easily go scouts with the Sith. So he, from his perspective, he doesn't know what I'm doing. He has no idea, in fact. So I'm kind of using that to my advantage as well, a little bit. Now I'm feudal just kind of scouting him. I don't really care about the Strush. It's not doing anything to me. It's like idling one of my bills. It's no big deal. And now, now we can go to gold. Awesome. <clears throat> and you'll see, guys, once I get to the... Yeah, once I get the range up, I'm gonna be able to produce archers. Like this is not I'm not late to gold here. Common misconception that like you have to go to gold early. That's an old build order, guys. Always make sure to adapt your builds. Do it sharper. So now I'm gonna go five on gold. That's how much you need for one range. He's up relatively fast. There's a 22 pop-up, which is pretty good. One of these builds will go back to gold. The other one is gonna go ahead and continue walling. So just take this one. And looks like he's already walling. That's why I didn't want to go scouts, guys, because he's going to already be fully walled, probably. And ooh, what is that? A range. So he's going to maybe go skirmishers here. We'll keep an eye. We'll keep an eye. And I'm going to continue just doing my thing. Not going to really bother with horse collar. I might have to fight this now. I'm going to send my scout back. I was a bit lazy on my end to not have that walled up. But it's all good. I'm at Luzaville. It doesn't really matter, though. The idea is to have a good strategy. I used to think that, like... You know, the early game matters so much that if you lose one village, the game's over, but it's really not like that. Obviously, it sucks to lose a villain, you get harassed a lot, but yeah, it's... There's a lot more chances for me to win here, it's not like it's over. I just gotta get my scout back to defend a little bit more. I'm trying to mass the archers up as well here. I can just fight here a little bit as well with uh, my villagers. I lost a lot of the HP on my scout though. Them. All right, we're gonna go scout the map now. That scout's kind of useless, so I'm just gonna make some use of him by just scouting the map. And of course, 
fully well in my base slowly here. That's how it should be done, guys. You don't want to wall too early because then your units will be compromised. You can't produce anything, but you don't want to delay walls too much because then, yeah, you can be into a lot of trouble. So let's fully wall our base. He's just still being annoying here. All good. I'm a bit rusty on this fine morning as well. Um, didn't play at all yesterday, so... It's like first game of the two days for me. Damn. Oh, of course. That, that's one of my pet peeves, actually, for... Uh, for Avery. The villagers always end up on the wrong side of the walls. I'm just gonna fully wall. And like I said, I, if, if I ever see skirmishers from him, I should check, in fact. He's getting the blacksmith now down, so I need to rush a blacksmith myself. Um, if I ever see skirmishers, I need to react appropriately. And see, had I not lost the villager, I would be able to afford the blacksmith a little bit earlier, but it's okay. Don't see what killed me, which is kind of bad. Let's put back that village on wood. The one I lost. Ah, actually, no, it just makes farms. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna be down like 50 wood pretty much for the feudal age. Um, can you get a gate here as well? I'm playing a little bit more defensively because I don't really know what he's doing and I think he's fully walled anyways, so there's no point of really rushing this. I'm gonna play for more of a mid-game stance anyways. I'm not really planning to play for anything early game, so that's kind of my idea. I could get Fletching or I could wait on it as well. You have to make the Blacksmith relatively early just in case, because if your opponent attacks you with Fletching, you need to be ready to fight, but in this case, I'm not really sure if I'm excited to attack my opponent. Like He has Lithuanian Scrims, which move faster, so I actually, I can move across the map here. Because if he has skirmishers, I'm screwed. But what I could do is just mass up my archers, chill, and then as soon as I go to cast stage, I'm going to have that stable. So even if he has skirmishers, I'll be able to counter it. Does that make sense? Also, if I see a lot of skirms, I don't have to go camels. I can simply go siege monk. But I think he's going to search the knights, if you ask me. Okay, let's see if I can kill this guy a little bit. He's kind of disrespecting me. Yeah. People are too good these days. They don't die to this kind of stuff. What I could do is this. Ah, it's like a free unit. And like, I don't need to hide the fact that I'm going archers because he already knows, so I'm just gonna take that free unit when it comes my way. And this uh, this episode turns into a very in-depth strategy, actually. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. I know the people who watch this really want to get a good understanding of the civilization, and I think if you learn some strategy and how civ matchups work, that's going to be very good in the process of learning the civilizations. Um, I could go up. I'm going to do one more vill, I guess. I'll do one more vill. It doesn't really matter. I'll put it to gold. Six on gold should be enough for, like, archers and camel. Um, and at this point, like, I'm not really following a builder. I'm doing it by complete intuition here. Because, like I said, like, I lost a vill on wood, right? So, like, I have to adapt, you know? There's no, no builder that tells you what to do if you lose a vill on wood. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> So yeah, you gotta adapt. Now I'm gonna get a gold mine upgrade. I'll get my horse collar. Guys, if you can get horse collar early, just pick it up. Um, I personally couldn't afford it this game because I got drushed and I had to wall in my resources. If I didn't get drushed, I probably could afford it. Just how it works. It's really not a big deal though. Don't ever stress too much over these kind of things, whether you get a horse collar or not. It, it pretty much doesn't matter. I think you can wall like this, yeah. Pretty, pretty nice trick there. You can wall even if you can't exactly pass through so that even when you over bury this like you over chop the berries whatever you want to call it you're still fine i'm gonna get the stable down transition to camels of course i'm gonna get fletching now because i'm not really saving anything so those resources are just sitting there and i'll get a couple more houses just so i'm not mbl uh, and i probably will need to get ar armor at some point here because if you don't get any armor on your camels they kind of hard die to skirmishers so yeah uh also it's still a bit early for me to move out like I would love to move out, but I have no vision. Oh, he was there with something. He hit my wall with three. So he has at least three range units here. At least. Unless that was a scout. It looks like it was a scout, yeah. That was a scout. Palisade has two armor, so that was indeed the scouts, yeah. Just have to make sure. Damn, I was like a detective on the case there. Yeah, Bloodlines is just a really good tech to have. Um... I don't want to really make more. I, I'm, I'm going to contest the relics here, by the way. That's like my big plan. So I'm up. i going to get this. Uh, probably will cancel bloodlines. Actually, just get Bodkin Arrow and continue playing the game. And I'll probably get one scout as well. I'm going to get a monastery right away. Ooh, that's not good. 
I probably just get one scout just to try to chase the scout. Because if I don't do that, what's going to happen is that his scout will kill all my monks. I see three relics. I will contest those three. I don't really see anything else, but I don't really care right now. I'm going to start making camels. I don't know what he's doing, so I don't want to make too many camels. But I'll start making one. Uh, but I might cancel it for a monk, actually. Yeah. Because I, I still don't know what he's doing. That, that stable is completely like a blind counter. Killed another spear. He's two rangers, so... Looks like I might not even need the camels at this point. I'll just continue making crossbow. Yeah, he's just on crossbow, so it's totally fine. He's not going any knights. I'm going to go crossbow, and we're going to chill. I could even go with, with a seed shop as well now. I think I will do it. And you might be thinking, like, wow, delaying town centers for so long? Guys, I have a lot of military. I don't need to shy away from playing the game in Castle Age here. Get those guys to gold. I have a lot of military. I want to contest the relics. If I get all four relics, I'm not scared of Lithuanians at all. Literally at all. Uh, so I'm just going to do my thing here. I don't want to re too many farms though. Because um, I'm playing mostly crossbow and um, siege here. And monks. So, like, I don't really need many many farms here. In fact, I shouldn't even reset any farm right now. Until I get a town center. I'm going to get a scorpion just to start things off here. Just to defend myself if need be. And I want to get another town center, probably in the back wood here. This wood is really bad. He can easily kill me from a hill. So I'm going to dip this side. Like, yeah. Just chill a bit. He might have ballistics. I have to watch out for that. A little bit of micro war. <laughs> Everyone's favorites. Going to try to pick up the relics here. While, everything, while the chaos is happening, guys, just try to pick up the relics. It's really not too hard. And this is a good habit to have in general. Like, while there's fighting back and forth, if you can somehow pick up relics, you're going to be in a great position. I'm just going to try to close the gap here. And with that scorpion, I close the gap so I can take good trades. Hopefully. I am downhill, though. I'm not sure if this is a good trade at all. Seems like I lost the fight. And that wasn't a good trade at all here. But that's okay. We can adapt. Go ahead and pick up the relic and use my scouts here on the back side of things. And now, this is where the stable is hurting me here. Because I went for a blind stable, but he just stayed on crossbow. So now, it actually almost doesn't make sense for me to continue making crossbows. Because I'm just behind the number, but I still will because I need to get, get some pressure. Uh, taking that fight was a mistake in hindsight though, because, <clears throat> yeah, I was downhill. I thought I had more, but now I'm kind of screwed, so... Now, like, to try to recover here. Does he, yeah, he's got ballistics, and I don't know if I can take that relic. I, I would try it. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that, but I would just try to run away. And I'm, I'm going to defend with Siege completely here. Run away with this, mo with this uh, scouts. Cool. Cool. I'm going to get another town center as well. Probably right out here. I know his, his army isn't here, so this is actually completely safe for me to do this, by the way. Oh, a spear, man. I want to add another range probably as well. Now, I could actually switch to skirms. Actually, that's the play. I should switch to skirms because I have a stable. I'm ready to make camels. He's got a lot of crossbows. I'm not going to catch up in crossbows. Let me switch to skirms. That makes a lot of sense. Decision making on the fly. And as you can see, all that decision making jungle that I had in the early game, whatever you want to call it here, it, it completely, like, the, 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 the whole plan that I had flew out the window as soon as he went for a drush, you know, like, it completely changed everything, but that's okay. Like, I just adapted. But my my plan to get the relics is still intact. And I'm hitting with an attack ground. He hits a deer, and that actually saves him. Wow. That's crazy. No one the deer screws me over, but that one saved him. <laughs> that was actually pretty crazy. Uh, he has got siege, by the way, so I need to defend here with more siege myself. Oh, God. So scary. I don't want to lose. I hate losing for the soy, soy want to play because I feel like my credibility drops like crazy if I lose games. But I only, I, I do, this is one take, you know, if I lose this, I lose this. Oh, ho, 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 ho. big. Okay, I need to somehow get that relic. I have two relics. You just want to take away the relics so they have a bad late game. It's pretty simple. Oh, is that a relic? I thought that was a relic. It's not a relic. It's like a wolf. Should I go for that relic now? Um, I think he's taking them as well. So this is like the third relic. I'm trying to guard it here. I'm gonna send my monks out for that one. If I can get three relics, I'll be pretty happy with the situation. Uh, let's go ahead and get university now. 
I can actually fight him a little bit because I have fully upgraded skirms. And if he goes knights, I'm so chilling because I, I can actually go camels then. So I want him to go knights. I'm actually hoping he goes knights. Pick up a free unit here. I got the relic. I got the relic. Is there any other relics? I think I think that's it. I think I saw him take two off the map, but I'm not sure. I thought that was a relic, but it's like a shorefish. <laughs> Couldn't see it. Uh, okay, now I need a lot more farms, as you can see. Um, oh. That's fine. He might lose his whole army here. So, like, whenever you lose bills like this, don't think, like, oh, man, how, how, I made a huge mistake. I lost bills. This is fine. It's a trade. He he got the bills. I know his army is. That's huge. I can, I'm going to go trap him now. I'm going to go set up a trap. I'm completely fine. But yeah, guys, macro this game was really bad for me. Uh, eco management was really bad. <laughs> Excuse me. And okay, we got knights. <laughs> okay. So I gotta run to my monks now. And I gotta switch to some camels. But I'm okay with that. I was ready for this. I was ready for this. Don't worry, don't worry. It's all good, it's all good. All under control. But yeah, now he did get away with his army because he has a lot of knights. So he just killed a few bills and, re and left. Fine. That's how it goes, that's how it goes sometimes. I have a lot of gold, not a lot of food. And that's of course because I wanted to go like, you know, mangonel, crossbow, all that stuff. And it costs a lot, man, it costs a lot. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit to Cast Lich because I think we can still fight. Like, I have a big army. I don't want to just wait to Imperial Lich. I think he has a big army as well. So I can't just wait for Imp randomly, it's not gonna work. Now nah, he's just greedy, man. He's just greedy. <gasps> oh my god, what was that? He's being so greedy and I'm like punishing myself. Do I have ballistics? Oh, I don't have ballistics. I'm so bad. Ballistics would have been so good here chasing that army. I thought I had it. My bad, my bad. You can see it a little bit rusty here. That's okay. It's all good. I'm just gonna go for a lot of camels here. Hopefully, I don't mag in all my units ever again. I got three relics. I'm pretty satisfied with the situation relic wise. Yeah, obviously. <clears throat> Alright. I, I need to start doing some damage though to him, like pushing him a little bit because he might just go up to imp now and I gotta be careful of that looks like no he's committing he's committing that's fine I can continue committing then as well that's weird Clean up in the house, baby. Should I conserve some of my skirms if possible? But yeah, as you can see, I'm like, like look, look how it's knights versus camels, and it's like, oh my god, Hera, like your opponent's so dumb, he's just going knight into your camels. But no, we saw how the game developed. I forced him into this. You know what I mean? It's not like he's randomly making knights versus like, like versus Indians. He was forced into this by some series of decisions that we made, and even this is not quite over yet. Hold on, I gotta focus up a little bit more. So he's gonna get a castle here. It's gonna be pretty annoying, but I can like do this trick with the monk. And just end up converting a knight, maybe. That's not a very good fight for me actually. I'm trying to back up. I need to get a market now because I'm low on gold all of a sudden, like it's just so messy. 
I wish my execution was half decent in this game. It would be nice. Okay, we're up. Should be decent still. And now I'm actually scared of him going for pikes randomly as well. I can go hand cannon. I want to play camels for the most part. I don't think he's up to the next stage, is he? If he is, I'm pretty screwed actually. I have a lot of farms. I think I, I, I think I need to just go like camel skirm here. This is the only option. That makes sense. Which is fine. It's not a bad option. Don't don't get me wrong. It's not a bad option at all actually. And he, his knights aren't that strong because he only has two relics, so it's completely fine. Yep. Gonna make more more and more camels here. I actually kind of want him to go in here because, yeah, I, I would just completely feed him if he does. And don't randomly switch to Ghulam here, guys. Ghulam is not good versus cavalry. It's a good unit, but you have to know when to use it. So just just pointing that out there. He wants to fight this. He's crazy. I think I win this one, no? I'm getting worried now. He's trying to fight it. <laughs> Sometimes when I think something, it's like, oh, he's trying to fight it. Now I'm second guessing myself. But yeah, it's pretty. I mean, I have camels at the end of the day. You know, it doesn't matter how bad I play. If I use the right units. It's gonna be fine. And yeah, now I see the pikeman coming out, so it's, it's quite clear what his comp is gonna be. He's gonna go pikeman and knights, but the problem with that is that's two melee units. And two melee units just feels so easy to counter sometimes. So I think we'll be fine at countering that. I'll probably stop making those soon. Gonna get the inscription right from the top. And it's not my stone just to be able to afford everything I want to. Yeah. Make another range. And of course, like, lo look how easy it is to counter. Like, pikes pikes are just, like, gonna melt in my skirms. And you just keep them in place with the camels, and you just completely shred them. I'll go for more stables, because light cap spam is good as well. Mix of, mix of camel. Like, my main comp is camel, but I'm not gonna shy away from a few hussars, of course. At least light cap, at least light cap. Please let me make light cap. It's my dream. Uh, I should probably get that actually. And now I just need some siege. Like, guys, one gold unit, one food unit, like trash unit, and a siege unit. It's literally every game you can make this composition. You just gotta. Like, the hard part of what I did this game, I didn't play well at all, guys. Forget about mechanics. My, my mechanics have been completely terrible. But it doesn't matter. I feel like as long as you think properly and like you do a good strategy, you're gonna be fine. So now just a few light caps to raid a little bit because I can use some raiding and like just just to take the load off the gold because I have a lot of camels, which costs a lot of gold. But now I'm kind of low on gold, so I should take a few light caps, not too much, not my main units, just to raid and take a little bit of load off that gold. And I'm trying to look for a fight right now. I'm gonna go just visit my trebs here real quick. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick with my trebs. I have Imperial Camel. On the way as well, so yeah, <laughs> it's pretty pretty good. So I raid with the light cap. Light cap is also good, I really good actually at getting you vision. So oh okay, so I'm I'm not allowed to take that gold. That's fine. Get this, get that, get that. All the upgrades. Let's go. Huge. He has alphas everywhere. This guy. He's probably on this gold. There's like doing something with it. I'm gonna attack him, I think, if I can. At least kill the outpost, you know? Actually, no, he's looking to me. He wants to fight me now. His heart attack is always good. I'm gonna pick that up. But don't, don't randomly get his heart before making camels. I hope that's clear, guys. I'm getting his heart after making camels. I'm gonna delete some villages. I want more army. Yeah, he had the village there near the gold. And I can just kill buildings with these guys as well, because they attack faster and shit. He just got Imperial Age. Let's see if I can hold this comp he has for us. A lot of stables, because you want to make sure we're reinforcing quite nicely. Gonna keep the uh, 
control group there though. And now I'm gonna just send some Hisars to raid. Get the camels back near the traps because I think he's he's kind of getting a little antsy here. That's a word. He wants to fight me. And I want to make sure I have some camels in the game. I'm gonna sell some of that. I could get the golden come. Actually, that's a not. Yeah, that's pretty good. Get this because I have three relics. So like, extra golden come is not bad at all. Um, oh, if you ever have a villager randomly there, make an alpha. That's good. <laughs> pro tip. Pro tip. And he's just repairing that castle. It's a little bit of a stalemate. I always wonder in situations like this, should I just die? I feel like maybe I could have dove him earlier. I'm trying to delete more bills to make sure I have a lot of army. And it's a bit of a hard fight to, to win for me because I need to make sure my scrims are always hitting the cab, uh, the halb, sorry, and not the cab. But I have a hill, so I'm pretty feeling pretty confident about this one. Yeah, so I'm misclicking a little bit with my scrims here, as you can see. Uh, should be a win though. And don't don't hit anything that's not a cab. With, uh, that's not a halberd. Excuse me, with your scrims, that's not worth it. And it's just complete domination. Look at my production. I'm gonna be back to 200 pop quicker than you've ever seen. More traps, more siege. Now he's dead. Now we dive. You don't give him a second to breathe here. If, if you're on, if he's on the run. You don't give him a second to breathe here. Cut throat. That's how we do it around here. Don't wanna throw though. Gotta be careful. I'm raiding him on the sides. Cut throat, but not cut throw. I don't remember that. And the reason why it's good to fight here is that he is hurting. He's trying to remass. I'm already 200 pop. I want to continue fighting. This is how you get advantage in late game. It's not a rocket science. You get advantage by fighting when you're at 200 pop. Your opponent is not 200 pop. You're going to win the fight most of the time. Depending on the composition, of course. And now I can, I can actually, now that he's got a lot of help, just switch to hand cannoneer if I want to. Like, you can do so many different units here. It's really quite, quite fascinating. I uh, just what the Civ can do and what what it can't do. It, it, it can do everything almost. I can get siege engineer now because of course the Civ has it. And yeah, my, my composition is perfect. No, no reason to switch to hand cannoneer. It's perfect. Scrims are enough. But like I said, it is an option for whatever reason. If you felt like you needed it. GG is called. We don't need it in this case. Thanks. To, thank you so much for watching the game, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of So You Want to Play Hindustanis. And well, what a fantastic game this was. I, I really I really enjoyed this game in particular because I played so poorly because I was just like not... I'm like, I just woke up. I'm like not fresh at all. Um, but I just... I, I feel like I use my brain well. Uh, and I think that that's something that's easier to replicate than crazy mechanics, you know? But there was not really any crazy mechanics this game. Uh, it was pretty fun. Alright, let me show you guys the stats and then I'll just quickly say bye to you guys. Alright guys, that's going to be it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And check me out on twitch.tv slash Hera. Link in the description below as well. I'll see you guys next time. Peace!